Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. At this time, I will be looking at a particular prophecy that the Lord gave me in August of 2022. This is August the 16th, 2022, and the title of this prophecy is Human Trafficking in South Africa. So I'm going to be just looking at one or two prophecies con um, concerning Africa. I already put up the ones that I had before, but I will be looking at the particular dream that God gave me concerning an event that he showed me will happen in South Africa concerning the trafficking of children. And there is no banner scripture on this one. It was just a quote that really touched my heart. And it's by this man by the name of Jiddu Krishnamurti. And the quote says, it is by no means a measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. I will say that again. It is by no means a measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. This means that when the society is showing the kind of damaging ills that I'm going to discuss in this particular prophetic dream that God gave me, and the citizens of that society are so used to it that it's just an everyday type of thing, then it means that the whole society is sick on one hand because of the sick things that happen, and on the other hand because of the sick people that live there and let those things happen. So I began to see a headline in my dream, and the headline said 600 children used for sex slavery in South Africa. 600 children used for sex slavery in South Africa. And that headline was the star of the dream. It was a screaming headline that was splashed across all the newspapers of South Africa. So I saw newspapers that was in the dream on people's desks, and I saw that people were reading the newspapers in the public transportation, which are called taxis, but they're not like yellow cabs. They're not like our Ubers and cabs here. It's different. It carries a lot of people at one time. And I saw that people were scrolling this headline on phones and tablets, and even old people who should not be reading this kind of sordid stuff were reading it about this child trafficking bust. Everybody was reading it. Even young people were reading it, school kids, working moms. I saw government officials. Everybody was riveted by this because this was one of the biggest exposes one of the biggest exposés of a big bunch of sex crimes against children being revealed at once. Then I saw the headline again, 600 children used for sex slavery in South Africa. And every time this headline came in the dream, the dream would change and something else would be happening. So after this first time I saw it where everyone was like, huh? This was a breaking story, 600 children used for sex slavery in South Africa. The next thing I saw was how sex Af um, South Africa has a culture of abusing children. So I'm not going to say, oh, it's something that happened. No, it is, it is a culture. Every nation has a culture. Every nation has something that they do that they're known for doing. This country has a culture of sexual molestation and systematic destruction of young people from a young age, beating children severely. I saw people talking to children like they are nothing. And God spoke about this in one of the prophecies here in America. It's called God said, and I was looking at many different types of child abuse that God was showing me. And one of the types of child abuse is talking to young people in such a way that without using your hands, you tear away their personhood. You tear it by talking to them like they are less than trash, less than rubbish, less than human. You tear away their humanity in the way that you address them, in the way that you feed them, um, treat them. I saw them putting young people out of the house at a very young age, literally throwing them out in the streets, 
to go and fend for themselves, knowing what the streets are like for a child. I saw them starving children at home, not wanting to give children home food. I saw them beating these children severely, but what I saw most of all what that was that South Africa has a culture of men who love to caress, stroke, and touch the young developing flesh of South African girls and teenagers. I said, I saw that there is a culture of men touching, caressing, and having sex with young developing girls and teenagers in South Africa. And so in this part of the dream, after seeing the children being abused from a young age, I saw a man, I didn't see people's faces in this dream. So, um, for some reason, God will just cut off people's heads. So I will just see, I saw this man with a huge stomach, a huge stomach in the act of raping a girl with a very voluptuous body, but she was still young. She was either an early teen, middle teen, not 16, 17, 18, 19, like that. She was a lower teen. And this man had come into the bedroom. And I suspect that this man was either this girl's father or he was some kind of family to her because he lived in the same house. And he came into her bedroom in the early morning and just pulled his boxers down enough to jump on this child. And I saw that this girl was not fighting because she was used to this man doing it. She, she wasn't moving. She was just lying there like a plank. She was just lying there like a plank, enduring it so that she can get, get dressed for school in the morning so she can wake up and get dressed for school. And this was happening in how Tang, how Tang. And the way that this man was on this child, I promise I was watching this vision and I was wishing that this man would die. I was wishing that he would have a stroke or some kind of other heart event right there and just pass away. And the Lord said to me, as I was looking at this, he said, the girls of this place, Hao Tang, are very well acquainted with sexual activity at a young age because their fathers, their uncles, their brothers, their cousins, their school teachers, their schoolmates, the males who are their caretakers, and in fact, random males, this is society at large. This is just random older men, younger men out there in the society outside these girls' homes. He said they are heavily attracted to when these tiny, skinny, little, smaller ones, eight, nine, ten, suddenly enter into that womanhood phase where things begin to grow. And God was showing me that in this part of Africa, these girls undergo this transformation very suddenly. So you can meet somebody one summer in her 11th year, and you, she's just a normal sweet. Uh, um, skinny, willowy teen. The next time you see this girl at 12 or 13, she has filled out so rapidly. That is the way their puberty goes. God was showing me. And he said that these girls all end up knowing about sex at a very young age because it is guaranteed. These are not my words. These are the Lord's words. He said, it is guaranteed that someone will touch most of these children before they reach 10 years of age. And he said, after you have molested someone from eight, six, nine, ten, he said that person ends up spiraling into now sexual activity because the Bible says, do not awaken love before the time. So when you end up touching children way before the time that they gain adult maturity to know what this act is, what is in, what does it entail to learn from parents what the responsibility is for it, and then to also learn the mind of God. Who is it for? The married only. Only the married. A man and a woman only. Before these children have access to that information that keeps sex in a safe, a safe role in a person's life, people have already touched them, raped them, molested them, and involved them in sex. And then he says they begin to react to the rape and the molestation trauma by becoming super hyper-sexualized and involved in early adult sexual activity, but they are still children. So this view of this man who was assaulting this girl, this is not a hero story because God was showing me inside the child's heart. 
This girl was not planning to wait until she got a little older to approach her mother. She was not planning to run away. She was not planning to set up a, a to catch a predator video and video the man in the act. She was not planning to tell the police. This girl had no plans to be her own savior. She was simply waiting for this man to finish so that she could wash, put on her school uniform and go to school. And I saw that this child had been holding this assault, this pain in herself for a very long time. And the reason was because she already knew what would happen if she spoke up. She knew that she will feel all the backlash of her mother. She will feel all the backlash if that was her father's brother who lived in the house with them, if that was her own father, if that was her mother's brother, her cousin who lived in the house with them, if she spoke up, she would get the backlash and pain of exposing this man. She would be told that she is a prostitute. She will be told that she is a liar who lies on men and accuses men. She would be told that she is a whore who lusts after men and tempts men. And that is why the man raped her. And I heard this sentence, you are so ugly. Who told you that my husband would ever want you? You are just a liar looking for attention. This situation is why this girl had been putting up with this rape. So I was feeling extreme anger in my heart towards that man in the dream. And then it changed again. 600 children used for sex slavery in South Africa. The headline flashed. And then I saw a massive metal elevator. And I'm not talking about the kind that we're used to that says 11 to 12 people, please, or 13 to 15 if it's a bigger elevator. This is a service elevator that you find fitted into the back of certain types of buildings. That thing is big enough to carry a tractor in it. It's big enough to carry a car in it. And so this one was coming from the underground floor of a building and I saw 60 black children very poor looking, most of these children, 60 black children were being moved by night into that elevator. And none of these children looks like they were older than 13 years old. So they were very small, skinny children. And some of them still had toys. And I remember looking and thinking, these must be the new ones because children who are shuffled from place to place for a very long time in the sex trafficking, they are unfortunately extremely acquainted with the bitterness of that life. They do not get toys. They do not get birthdays. They do not get anything. They just get passed from person to person. So the ones that still had toys, I figured they must be new, but most of the children did not have any kind of toy. And there were only two men who were handling the movement of these children from that bottom level parking garage into the elevator. And the reason that it only needed two men is because those children were so well controlled and they were so scared and they were so obedient. Not a single one of them was even talking. So I figured it was probably late night movement of trafficked children after everyone has gone to bed and these elevators can be used. And I saw where these children go. They end up at private birthday parties. They take off all their clothes and they are made to perform naked sex acts on each other for the guests. They are made to perform naked sex acts on the guests. These things are called sex parties. Private sex parties taking place in South Africa featuring extremely minor children. The ones that I saw nobody had hit their 13th birthday because hardly anybody had breasts yet. That's how young they were. They get taken to these parties to serve as performers. The performers want to watch the children do stuff to each other. The performers want the children to do stuff to them. All of this came out in the newspaper article that is going to come out in the future. Private parties, and the, the article was carrying names of some of South Africa's who's who. Some of South Africa's cream of the crop. TV stars, music stars, political stars. They were all featured in that article. And the private parties of those who held those parties and those who attended was being exposed as one of the places where many of these paid for and trafficked children make an appearance. At the same time that I was seeing them naming top officials, top supermodels, top TV 
TV announcers, top movie stars, music celebrities, as people who have the parties and go to the parties. God was showing me an ordinary birthday party with children happy, were, were running around, spraying water on each other. There was a big bouncy house. You know, the, the bouncy house that the children like to bounce on. There was cake. There was the party bags. And God was showing it next to the expose to show this is where the ch where, where children should be. But this is where children are. Excuse me, please. And then the the headline came again, 600 children used for sex slavery in South Africa. And in that dream now, uh, since the dream was changing every time I saw the headline, the next thing that I saw is I saw myself calling a friend. I called a friend in South Africa and I was concerned. I said, um, this thing is hitting the news here. And I want to know what kind of prostitution rings can that place possibly have that 600 whole children went into prostitution at one time and none of the households were able to come together and find out that this many children are gone at the same time? What Was any reporting done to trace it? How come nobody noticed it? How come all of the cases were not linked? Because you know here in America, the cops, they try. They will at least try to look for similar MOs and put things together, but I was like, so none of those cases of 600 whole children were seen as suspicious or related. What's going on over there? And, you know, I, I wanted to know from somebody who may know. So I described my concern, and this woman said, these men are ruining these children at the speed of light. You have to watch. It's the man in your household you have to watch out for. That's what she said. She said you have to watch these children, especially the girls, 24-7, because bottom line is even your own husband might notice that the child is growing up and touch them. The children themselves are problematic and they are so sexual, but I'm starting to think that it's a cause and effect, that the children aren't just sexual by themselves, but this is actually the effect of so many of them being touched and introduced to sex at such a young age. And she was explaining to me that with this embedded culture of sexualizing children and destroying them at such a young age, this woman said to me that she was not at all surprised at the news that had come out that 600 children were used for sex slavery in South Africa. And then the, the scene changed and now another woman was calling me and she was upset because she was saying to me, how can this be happening how can you be seeing this type of thing all the time and that you can never tell us what to do about it? You can't see where it's happening, Celestial. You can't even tell us where these places are. It's just upsetting. It's unacceptable if you're just going to be stressing us all the time about news, about predators and killers on the doorstep, but you can't even tell us where it is. And I just kept quiet because even if that person wasn't in South Africa, I know that parents can be irrational when they are scared. And I wanted to tell this woman, you know, I'm not a GPS map. I'm not a GPS tracker and I'm not Google Maps. And that's why I can't see where things are happening. I wanted to tell her that prophecy isn't a case where I'm not supposed to speak just because I can't say, oh, the murder is happening at 1152 Maple Drive. So I just kept quiet. And I just let her say what she wanted to say. And then the dream was over. And when I woke up from this very disturbing dream, God was saying to me the following. So please listen. God said that South Africa is a well-known trafficking hub for children. He said that it's one of the most modern countries in Africa. It has the lights. It has the glamour, the glitz. It has all the modern amenities that you're used to here in Europe. You're used to in Australia. You're used to here um, in Canada. And so he said, there are enough distractions in a nation that big and cities that modern that people can disappear there without a trace. So this is probably why the police had not linked all those children as children who were in one big sex slavery ring. 600, I didn't say 60 or 16 or even a hundred, 600 busted at one time. The Lord said South Africa is connected to all the international travel routes. It has quick services. It has seamless air traffic. And people can go in and out of that country without any kind of strenuous border checks or anything like that. So this might be land borders or the air borders or both. 
He said that people easily traffic women and girls, but they also traffic both types of children, teenagers and young women. But he said that children form an especially vulnerable population in South Africa. There's no good laws in place to protect children. And he said that even the laws that they do have, the enforcement of those laws is terrible. So this will probably be a pathetic police force who either don't call when they don't come when you call them that a crime is in session. They don't review video evidence, even if a girl does try to catch her own predator to get video evidence, to get evidence of a person stalking her. They will not come until that person gets violent with the girl, until that person rapes the girl on her way home. After she has reported many times, this person is scaring me, this person is telling me, just wait. I'm going to get you that kind of thing. He said they do not even enforce the laws that they do have to protect children. So he said many of the things that adults are doing to children in South Africa, nobody monitors it. Nobody cares about it. Nobody listens to these children when they speak up. And he said, even if it reaches the point of prosecution, it usually only happens when a child has been so damaged, probably damaged sexually or until the child dies. So only when the predator has raped someone to death or only when the predator has touched a one month old baby or something and a death results that suddenly now they're willing to call the person a criminal. Now suddenly it's, it's time to go to court. And he says the South African society allows over sexualization of women in general. So they're extremely trying to put forward this Jezebel Delilah look. And he said, men put their hands very early on female children for sex. And one of the things that I was seeing in this dream is what South African generally females dress like, especially the children, they are notorious. They are worldwide known in South Africa that they have one of the worst type of school uniforms. Remember that some schools, some nations, we don't bother much about school uniforms. You can always know if you see a kid in a school uniform in Europe or here that it's a certain type of school they're, they're going to. Kids always just wear, um, you know, they just wear clothes from home. They wear their own personal fashion. But many countries follow a dress code. They follow something called a uniform. And they do that so that as children are growing up, it gets, it takes away this, oh, you're poor and oh, you're rich. If everybody's in the same uniform, you can't actually tell whose background has money and whose background does not. And it helps a lot with peace of mind for the children in school because here in America, children have been known to commit suicide because their parents can't afford the right, I think it's called the right fit, the right clothes, the right fit, they call it, you know? And so you don't have the right sneakers, you, you don't have the branded this and branded that. And these, these children are quite wicked, wicked nowadays, and they torment one another until the other one commits suicide. The other one cannot enjoy school. The other one doesn't want to go to school anymore because his t-shirt all wrong, her, her dress is all wrong, her hair is all wrong, until they convince her that her presence is all wrong and then your child just decides they don't want to live anymore. But I saw that South Africa is right up there with Korea and Japan in, in terms of terrible school uniform. These children are half naked. Every single part of their feminine uh, body is either tightly outlined or it's totally on display. And so the Lord moved on to talk about human trafficking hubs scattered across Africa. He said, especially where you find a major city, these are the cities he named, Dar es, Dar es Salaam, Tunis, which is in Tunisia, and Rabat, which is the capital of Morocco. He said, once children hit those points, Dar es Salaam, Tunis, and Rabat, it is easy to slip them into the European sex trafficking trade. I think because those places might be closer to Europe. I'm not sure. But he said there are major trafficking hubs in West Africa, and Nigeria is the biggest one. Another one can be found in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, and also in limited amounts in the nation of Zimbabwe, and of course, South Africa. He says it all boils down to access. Who can access these children? 
Who has parental control over them? And how well are the parents doing their job? Who else has access to them? Family members, you're leaving your child with the grandfather and the grandfather is just living his best life on your nine-year-old son or daughter. And the child cannot talk because these are close family members telling them, oh, this is our secret and things like that. He says all these things, who controls the children? Who can access them? This is the, this is what greatly influences the trade of missing children. But he says that when it comes to the female trafficking, a lot of young women are drawn to the bright lights and the exciting opportunities that you can find in the big African cities. The problem is that Yao was saying that you move with no support structure. So you go and live in uh, Johannesburg or Cape Town and you have no support structure. And the Lord says it is very easy to prey upon you because when you go to places like that, your mom isn't there, your dad isn't there, your friends aren't there. You move from another place, maybe in South Africa that's smaller, or you move from one part of West Africa to another because you want a job job opportunity, but then you don't have a support structure. You're a young woman. It's easy for someone to drug your drink. It's easy for someone to say, oh, a couple of us are meeting up at this house, and then you go to this house and you get gang, rape, gang raped because you're new to that city and you don't know that that's what the boys do. And so he says that they are like deer. These young women are like deer going into a den of lion without knowing it or without even recognizing what that den is. And so this is the dream I had. And in it is the prophecy of the Lord that South Africa is heavily involved in trafficking minors. And one day there's going to be a massive story that breaks in the newspaper and may God hasten that day a huge bust with an unimaginable number of children involved. It may not be 600, it may be 551, it may be 602, it may be 401, but it is a huge number of children that will come out and these sex parties will be exposed with an unbelievable lineup of names, big names involved. And God was telling me when this happens, Expect for the community and South Africans to scapegoat and begin pointing here. This is some of the stuff he was saying. Parents will be saying it's not our fault. People will be saying it's the fault of the police. The police will say it's the fault of the community. Everyone will point at the judges and say the judges don't do enough to sentence the rapist. That's why the rapists feel free and frisky because nothing ever happens. He said it will be this and that. The government will be denying that they are responsible and that they will say they've done enough to make the community safe, but the community isn't acting wise. He said no. The truth is that this is a culture of waiting pedophiles, men, male family, male friends who are literally lying in wait, waiting for girls who are growing up to reach a certain point so they can touch them. The Lord says that when a mother is busy, she may only notice her daughter functionally. She may notice, oh, she's getting a little bit big now. I need to stop and get her some bras. But God said that predators see something totally different in your child, male and female. And he said, you can pick it up in their speech. Here are three sentences. Please listen. You look different than the last time I saw you. You look bigger. Or they might say, you look fuller. They might say, I can see you're becoming a woman now. If you ever hear a man, a male relative, a family friend, or anyone actually saying that around your child, male or female, saying that around your daughter in a certain way with a certain tone, and you don't step in immediately and nip that thing in the bud and also shame them publicly in a way that will let them know that harm can come to them if any harm comes to your child at their hands at any point in the future, then you are raising your children amiss. You are supposed to be the fence around your children you are supposed to be the place your child can tell you anything because you are the first support structure of your child. So if your child is like this young woman that I saw in the second part of the dream and her soul is a bubbling pit of pain because she knows that her mother will tell her, you're ugly. Who told you that my husband could ever want you? You're a liar and a prostitute. My brother could never touch you. My brother could never. Remember the prophecy that says, 
The way of the wicked is darkness. God said in that prophecy that when people have gone through the devastation of sexual abuse and they're trying to speak, and especially their family members knew about it and allowed the, the assault to happen because the person who was assaulting was that family member's family member. So a mother will let her husband assault the daughter because, or her boyfriend assault the daughter or the son, or she will allow the assault of her, of her brother against one of her children because, well, it's her brother and she doesn't want him to go to jail. So she sacrifices basically her child to this predator. God says that when he judges such people, it will be the worst judgment that they have ever experienced. I'm repeating word for word as I remember it. He said that when he judges you for allowing sexual abuse against the vulnerable, even if that abuse happened, I don't care how long ago. God says that he will do something that will make the heart of the victims smile. They will smile when God takes care of their pain. May the Father hasten that particular prophecy to fruition. So thank you for being with me. I'm Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. Until I see you again, goodbye.